This is exactly the reason why I've never let a girl lick my butt hole. Have they asked? Exact. All the time, dude. Or like, what? A, or like a finger or something how like do they, that. How do like, they, I don't want it. How do they bring it up? They go, I'm, I'm hungry. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. what do you, what do you like want? I just had Ramen? corn, so pretty much it hasn't broken <laughs> down yet. <laughs> like, what do you want? Whatever you had yesterday. That's what I would love. <laughs> okay, well, um, it's regret. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, dude, no matter how clean my butthole is, it's not that clean. It could look sparkly and pristine and everything, but you know it's not. You know what you did a couple hours ago. It's <laughs> unforgivable. Alyssa, do you want to get in there and maybe give us a one-two of what it's all about in there? May 28th, if we don't see you at our live show, Show, I will physically harm you and your loved ones. As you know, it's going to be such a fun show. Our first live show ever in LA. Link in the description for tickets. Again, I'll fight you and your family if you're not there. Also, we have a Patreon um, where you're going to get some behind the scenes stuff, not for, only from this episode, but some crazy stuff we can't put on the internet. So go subscribe to that. And again, if you don't, I'll break your kneecaps and I'll gouge out your eyes with a spoon. I don't know. Like, what's a good threat? Are those good enough? I feel like, like yeah, would you, you like give five bucks? On the head. Would yeah. you give five bucks if you were to keep your eyesight? Oh, 100 percent Oh, hell yeah. Then I'd give ten. But five's good. Yeah. yeah, five's good. Dude, come on, man. Don't be greedy. Uh link in the description, Patreon and live show. Thank you. Kiss your mom for me. All right. You excited? You shouldn't I'm be. I'm so psyched, dude. Yeah. You shouldn't be. It's overdue, man. I'm very excited. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 150 of Dropouts. Uh this week we got Matt Reif on. He finally has enough clout for him to come on here and <laughs> actually like I've boast boast numbers for us. Probably like, our most requested guest at this point. Really? Oh, don't don't oh, yeah. feed his ego, man. Really now? Yeah. Is it because we did videos before, you think? People knew we knew each other? I think we're we coincide in a similar realm where, you know, you're a little bit more on the top and I'm like in the middle of the elevator, but we're in the same building. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, as far as like if if the list is just of like Problematic white dudes who are going to get canceled for their jokes. Yeah, we're yeah, there. yeah, yeah, we're, we're there. there. Yeah. We're there. <laughs> we're there. Louis C.K. is obviously in the penthouse. Oh exactly. yeah, but that's uh, the executive suite right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we should make a movie like The Godfather, but of canceled people, and it's just he comes out. Oh, oh genius! Chris, Chris D'Elia is like his right hand man. Can we bring back <laughs> parody movies? Like I miss all those, like the scary movies or like the superhero movie. I've with been dying to. Do. I wanted to do not another woke movie. Oh my god. That Nobody would be fucking steal that. Can we bring back <laughs> um, intro music? There oh, we go. What a transition. Feel free to take a break. Sit back, relax. <laughs> what kind of white trash Love Island theme song is that? <laughs> no worries. We paid a lot of money. Wait, who made that again? I, I don't Was know. Was it you, who, Jared? No. In your room and you slaved for hours? Who? I Did you not, make that beat? Not me. It <laughs> couldn't be me. It sounded like I'm about to go to the villa, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to get summoned to Casa Amor. That's perfect. No, well, my, my parents, whenever they watch TV, they watch like reality TV. They're like, I could hear your music on this. I was like, that's not a compliment. That's not a compliment. <laughs> no. Oh, God. Lesbians do love reality TV, though. Oh, they love it. Because they're so they... far from removed from our reality. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Are, you, are your mom's hot? I mean, you shouldn't be directing that question over there. I mean, I'm right here. <laughs> yeah, mom's hot. yeah, you got to ask the, ex, the expert over well, there. Let's just say... Uh, Sometimes when they're in town, my fingers smell like they're fishing around in those uh, what, omega-3 pills. Is that what <laughs> oh, God. smells pretty bad? <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Jared, come on, man. I'm in love with them. <laughs> um, Matthew Stephen Wright. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. I was going to say rice. <laughs> Nailed it. I think there's probably like an Asian version of you that's really. <laughs> oh, dude, my like my vlog on YouTube, like my travel vlog is called Rife on the Road and people all the time are like, are you making fun of Asian people? Are you? <laughs> no, I'm, <laughs> which, I'm not. Which, <laughs> no. no, Jared wanted to ask this. Which race did you hate the most? Was it? Uh, that's a tough one. Probably the human race, I would say. For okay, the that's a cop out. That, that, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a little bit of That's a how you know he's got a publicist. You're welcome, now. publicist. <laughs> yeah, how I wanted to answer that question will never be known. God, it's not the same Matt Reif that we used to do videos no. with. He's media trained now. No, I, I, remember I don't when, like it any more than you guys. <laughs> I remember when you used to come over and it's like, you know, very, very offensive. And now you got this PR person. You want to fire her on the spot? Do you have her number? I could call her up. <laughs> I, could, I could just see if we can end it. You know what? Yeah, let's let's just burn this whole thing to the ground. Hey, mom. <laughs> you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. You're fired. Easy enough. Um, no, but I, I remember what we did that internet TV show like what two three years ago? Oh, Bird Patrol. Yeah, which surprisingly did very well. Like, I do. It's I, I get so many people who come up to me on the road to like meet and greets and stuff. Or like, when are you guys doing another season of Bird Patrol? I, I, I couldn't believe how well it was. Did, did uh, you tell them like, oh, we have no money? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I told them I was like, nobody wants to make it. Well, no, I just feel like at that time you were kind of explaining how you hadn't 
like you've worked really hard in the industry for a very long time but haven't received the respect that you think you've garnered. Like when do you think the, the switch happened? Was it when you started obviously putting out on social or cause fucking TikTok, dude. I know when, when we first met, I was like, Hey, you should post on TikTok, your stand up and then put captions. And you're like, dude, I'm not going on there to do this. <laughs> oh, no, you are so right. That fucking hurts so bad to say, but Zach was entirely right. Uh, you, you changed my life for the better. I mean, no worries. I only take a percentage. It's not a big deal. <laughs> how much? I mean, how much you make? Like, I don't know. You should ask. I'm, I'm, dirt, I'm dirt poor. I, um, <laughs> <laughs> there's no way, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, the amount of tours that I mean, selling out, it, it's got to feel good, right? It's been amazing, man. And it has genuinely just been from TikTok. And it's, I'd say like, I'd say like August was when everything began to change August, August of last year. And it was so interesting because it, it was such a confidence boost, not just because like I was selling out shows, but it was more like confirmation of like, I guess my skill set. Cause for years, like I've been in LA for 10 years. And it was like, I couldn't get a special. I'm not getting regular spots at a lot of clubs. It was like, after a while you start to go like, dude, do I fucking suck at yeah. comedy? <laughs> you know, like, is, 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 am I the one, am I in like delusion right now? Yeah. So when you get that kind of like, justification or, or what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, validation. Uh, validation. Yeah. Yes. When you get the kind of validation from that many people who find you funny on the internet, you go, wow, it was just a matter of finding my audience. That's all it was. It was accessibility. Yeah. Like people needed to find me. It's not like I got drastically funnier over the past seven months. It's, <laughs> it's not, not like, like a switch up. flipped yeah, in your head. Yeah, sell my soul. Yeah. yeah. I, think, yeah. I think Andrew, <laughs> Andrew Schultz has talked about being in a similar place. Like he couldn't sell anything. And then he started, I feel like he's kind of the godfather of short form comedy because he was, you know, put it in minute clips up on TikTok. I mean, on YouTube at the time, people were scrolling through and it's, yeah, it's people, it's hard for them to take a chance on you on a flyer or like for an hour special, but you know, they'll sit through a minute and they're like, oh wait, I want to see another minute. And then exactly. they end up watching longer than even a special would be. It's subtly addicting. And that's exactly what I needed, <laughs> thank God. But it's, it's, it's so fascinating, man. And just how fast everything changed. And it's great because now like myself and my fans hold all the power. It's yeah. great. Like I don't need Netflix, HBO, Comedy Central, or anybody to give me anything. If we want to make something for the for my fans and stuff, it's like we we can just do that collectively. There's no like gatekeeper to Hollywood success exactly. anymore. It's yeah. so funny. Like they, the industry really thinks they have all the power <laughs> still. And it's like you really don't at all. Oh, and they're grasping at that straw, Absolutely. that straw of power. And then they go re re remake another thing, re reboot another <laughs> another project from the '80s. That'll that'll save us for sure. <laughs> well, no, everybody's so everybody's bad. competing against everything now. It's not like NBC is competing against ABC. It's you're competing against the scroll and you're competing against this website, yeah. this website, and it's, it's weird though, because like a lot of movie studios fucked up in the beginning with a lot of like Vine and like early YouTubers. Cause when, when followers became this massive thing over the past, like what, four five, six years, something like that. Yeah. They took a, they took a chance They go, Oh, all these new people on Vine and YouTube have all these followers. Let's put them in movies and see if it translate. And they were fucking horrific actors. <laughs> people didn't want to see them in a long form project no. whatsoever. So now studios are like, well, people's followers don't necessarily translate to views. So what do we do with that? How do we compete against it? Yeah. So they kind of like, they just, they took a chance on the wrong group of people. I think it's like now they have to like sift through the people that have followers, but they also have to be like, are these people actually talented? Oh yeah. It, like in a form that's longer than 15 seconds. Exactly. They, they took a stance on that, on Addison Ray in that movie she did. And I think it flopped so fucking so bad. So bad. I think the only reason it got views was strictly for like the meme culture, like the, yeah. the trolls and, and everything. But I, I it's do one of those things you watch it cause you're like, how bad, how bad is it? Exactly. Like, is that a success to them though? Cause it was the number one movie on Netflix. So it's like, okay, we got the eyeballs. So the kissing booth. Which no, is that's the worst <laughs> movie. No, <laughs> which is which is what I'm wondering is because the good movies no one's going to see anymore, mm -hmm. but the ones that are getting clicked more have, is getting them more subscribers. So is that what they care? Do they care about subscribers or making good movies? Subscribers. Oh subscribers, yeah. Subscribers, views, and money is all they care about. There, do I can't tell you how many meetings I've taken with Hollywood studios that I'm like, they're like, what do you got? And I'm like, I have this idea, I have this idea, I have this. It's fully flushed out. Like I really believe in these ideas, and they go we're really not doing any original content right now. Like we're literally looking to like, I've, I've had producers and studio heads literally look me in my face and go, go back to the eighties and seventies and find a movie that worked back then and remake it into your own rendition of it. I was like, do you have any idea how much of a slap in the fucking face that is as anybody who's creative whatsoever? Yeah. That's crazy, Jared. That's like if somebody was like, pick a song or remix it. That's all. No, we hear exactly. From it's like well, what's your whole stuff career anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that is, still, nobody listens. That is true. It's not a big deal. Like hearing that sentence is insane. Of being like, we don't want to make anything original. Like that 
just the shift that our culture has taken is wild when even like, but like social media is about originality in a sense now. Yeah. Like you have to be, you have to find what separates you in order to get followers. But Absolutely. all these studios are just like, they're just hamming up the past. Well, I, I, I'm kind of wondering, is the next wave going to be, you know, people get together that are, that are, you know, have following and are talented. They make a really good movie, you know, as good as like an A24 quality and then partner with something like a Mr. Beast and just put it out. I think that is probably the next step. That's, that's what I'm saving up to do. And then it's, it's just going to transform. It's like, oh, wait, we didn't need anything. Everything's backed by, I guess, product placement or whatever it would be. And, you know, you get a Woody Harrelson in a movie with, you know, people like, you know, us that have the following, but hopefully have a little bit of talent. And then you just got a hundred million views by, yeah, by using the platform exactly. who lost there. And then once something gets nominated, that's a being on YouTube. I oh, feel like that yeah, changes that's the gonna game. That's going to be the game changer. Absolutely. I mean, that's, we, we have so much more freedom and you, you, ownership of your own material and everything. Nobody's trying to like take 10% from a 50 different angles. It's the, the, the creative freedom that we have now is amazing. And now I think it's just, like you said, it's just sifting through the right people. Yeah. Like, okay. A lot of people have followings, but it's like, okay, who, who has longevity in that? Who actually has a consistent skill set or talent to, to keep making fun stuff? I think that's kind of where the industry is heading. Definitely. And like the, the thing is once you, cause for your first special, you crowds crowdsourced yeah. like the, the money for that. Yeah, right. Go fund me. Yeah. And, once you get those talented people to make a movie and it's entirely crowdsourced, mm -hmm. you know? And so like, you don't even need the big studios for money oh, yeah. or distribution anymore. Mm -hmm. And like all the, all the crew, all the talent, whatever, it's all just collectively owned. That's, that's when it's going to be over. A, a friend of mine did a, a, a brilliant concept. He did a, um, a fan film of Friday the 13th, like his own short form reimagining of it. it's like 20, 25 minutes. Um, and they, they did the exact same thing. They, they crowdfunded the entire thing from just like these, these, there's massive fan blogs online for like Friday the 13th, Night, Nightmare on Elm Street. All oh, these things of people being like, we want more of this franchise, yeah. but studios either fuck it up or don't want to make it. Mm -hmm. So they went to those fans and they raised, I think they made it for like, like 180,000 or something like that they raised because I mean, it was little Not things bad. like, you know, they auction off, you know, memorabilia from like the actual movie. They get cast members who were in the original movies to pop in and do a cameo, little oh, stuff cool. like that that brings yeah. back the nostalgia. And then it did massive numbers. It went wildly viral and it was a massive success. And I was like, that's a perfect example of people taking matters into their own hands and making something via the fans. If people want it bad enough, like they'll support it. And then yeah. it's, it's all of ours, you know? That's that's insane. Though. Fine. That's We're going to make a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Alyssa, are you in? I'm in. Huh? Yeah. It feels like you guys are making a porn. Like just the way you, okay, the way you are. First of all, <laughs> we're in a diner we're, right now. This we're is, making a you're movie. You're telling me this isn't a porn hub set? Are you, are you down or no? Alyssa's got yeah. three holes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All oh right. my God. Alyssa, pick which one gets which hole real quick. Jesus Christ. That's the new fuck, Mary kill. Yeah, which, <laughs> which hole? Puss mouth or ass. Let's play it. Let's play a game right now. Oh, really? We're actually oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Her mom, oh, really? her mom listens to this podcast, and we can't be crass. Fine. Oh, uh, isn't your dad in love with him or something? Wait, what? Oh, yeah. Well, the other day, my dad was scrolling through TikTok, and he found, like, he called me. He was like, I found a new comedian. Like, he's just hilarious. And I said, oh, who? And he goes, Matt Reif. And I was like, oh, no way. <laughs> so funny. I got to fuck your dad. That's crazy. <laughs> have you have your numbers gone up since your numbers have gone up? You know what I mean? My publicist said I'm not allowed to talk about it. <laughs> you've, you've seen it. You've popped a couple more hoods, haven't you? Popped hoods. <laughs> oh God, how have I never thought of that? That's disgusting. What, man? Looking for the lever? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, give me a wrench if I'm in the room. There it is. Uh, no, no, no. You got to use two fingers. <laughs> no, I've mostly just been going to church a lot. You know, oh, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. To say baptisms, stuff like that. The Holy Ghost. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, oh, yeah. You're, uh, what's up with all this witch hunt stuff, man? Witch hunt stuff. The, the, the ghosting and they're, now you're scared of ghosts. Oh, oh ghost hunting. Yeah. yeah now witch hunting. That's, dude, like, that's, witch. What can, that's cancel culture. That's oh, okay. No, I, no, I apologize. Oh, we're going down that hole. <laughs> I love it, dude. It's so fascinating to me. A friend of mine, um, Elton Caste, he runs like a very successful YouTube channel channel and one of his sub channels in there is the overnight channel and i like i just i love scary stuff i'm obsessed with like ghosts and the paranormal and all that and he was he had been doing it for a couple of years without me and we became friends and every time he would go to a cool place like i would just text him and be like oh, it's fucking awesome you're going here like i i knew so i'm such a nerd about that stuff i knew so much place so much history about the place and he was just impressed by that and um you know he kind of had like his core group of people he traveled with like it's a very tight-knit 
production. And uh, it just wasn't working out with one of the guys on there. So they slowly started to incorporate me in. And um, we just started traveling around the world. We've been to like all these really like famously haunted places. It's fucking awesome, dude. It's terrifying, but so much fun. Why do you subject yourself to that? Like that just sounds like my worst nightmare. <laughs> it has something to do with just my natural skin color. I think like, just something, something about like white interest. You, re you relate to them? Yeah. <laughs> you relate to the ghosts. Are you really that afraid of ghosts? I, they freak me out. <laughs> just like, I can't, I, I watch scary movies like this. No. You know, like I'm the biggest pussy when, really? when it comes to. Do you like scary movies? Um, I'm, you know, it depends on the movie. I, the he, thriller, don't let them thriller fall. wise, like a quiet place. Like that's not a scary movie to me, mm. but I'm not trying to watch insidious. It's not for me. Really? It terrifies me. What about, the, <laughs> what about like the conjuring movies? Like, oh, fuck. The Conjuring, <laughs> they're so good. The, no, the 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 bitch, the nun. Okay, that's my. He's, very, bitch. Passion. <laughs> He's <laughs> very passionate about this. I fucking hate her with all of my guts. Like all, every fiber of my being hates. <laughs> so you kind of look like her with your face. <laughs> yeah, like don't that. fucking melt your face. <laughs> I hate her. I, I just went to the original Conjuring house. Shut the out, hell like, up. I, I say like three or four weeks ago. I Did think. you do the meet and greet? What was she like? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, yeah. What she's was not getting into heaven? Man. <laughs> oh. What was what was the house like? It's amazing. <laughs> I want to hear it. Look at it's goes. nothing like it's nothing like it is in the, in the first movie. Like it's it, it's based on the original Conjuring movie, right? Okay, yeah. It's a, it's a small cabin in the middle of Connecticut, I think. Rhode Island, maybe. Really, I think it's it might a be Rhode small Island. Cabin. It's a small. Ca it's not very big at all, but it's fucking creepy and awesome. Do you feel like? A presence there. I don't know. Do they cleanse the house? Like, is it? They do, but like the original story behind it, like it just it just varies. Nobody really knows quite what happened or why it happened there. There's so many theories behind it. Um, I will say it didn't feel like evil. Really? It didn't say, but there's also like, Sexy, there's so many sex, a little a little sex. It is yeah. actually an Airbnb, so people for sure Shut fucking there. Up. Oh no. my god! Yeah, these humans will do it anywhere. <laughs> I've seen insane. so many videos, dude. I gotta show you. They'll do it anywhere. <laughs> That's one of the most wild fetishes I've ever heard of. Oh, let's humans having sex? House? Let's yeah, let's go fuck in a haunted house, but like oh, a legit yeah. haunted oh, house. Yeah, it's a threesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? oh god. It's Just demon time. To rap demon time. <laughs> STD, sexual transmitted demon. <laughs> can I be? Fuck. Can I be honest about something with you? Please. And I'm open to change. I'm open to having a conversation about it. I personally don't believe in ghosts, but really? I'm here. I'm here to. I'm hey, and I'm not married to the idea. So I was wondering yeah. if you could. You know, take me down the breadcrumbs until we see Hansel and Gretel. What's going on? You've just never not texted a girl back. <laughs> um, no, I believe in them ghosting me. Trust me. If he, he's seen a lot of that. Um, yeah, but paranormal, no. Really? <laughs> Could you walk me through some, like, make me believe? Is that okay? Because I, I want to believe because it means, you know, there's something besides just this and then eternal nothingness. I don't know, man. I just, I, the afterlife in general is just, let me ask you that. What do you think happens when you die? Um, I think it's very similar to like, you remember what you're doing in like 1742? Oh, obviously. But you know what I mean? Like you can't, <laughs> you can't conceptualize what you're doing on that day. I think it's very similar where it's just, you don't exist. Interesting. Does that not just want to make you have an existential crisis? Or it's like, oh yeah. Dude, are we, do we even fucking matter? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh no, definitely. <laughs> I could a hundred percent see that as a, as, as a possibility. Look, I, I, I change him immediately. goes, dang it, man. <laughs> he calls Elton. I'm out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing about it. I don't know. I don't know what happens. If 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 we die and we go to heaven and there's a God, awesome. Yeah. I hope that's the case. Well, that's Pascal's right? wager. What's Pascal's wager? Will you, will you look up like kind of the actual definition because I'll butcher it, but it's basically like I'm believing and hoping because that's a much better option than nothing being there. Yeah, and I think that's what religion is for most people. Yeah, yeah. So much, so many concepts of religion are fucking outrageous. You're like, this is probably not a hundred percent correct. But you're like, I gotta believe in something because without it, I'm so lost. And what's the point of life or whatever? Yeah. So like, I hope there's a god, but also, if we die and nothing happens, like you just fuck, you're just a, a thing in the dirt for the rest of eternity. That also would make so much sense. Can I tell you my scariest theory? And this hell has yeah. kept me up at night. Oh hell! Here what we I go. think is the scariest thing that could happen is like when you die, you lose all bodily function, right? Like you're you're absolutely nothing as a body. Oh no! But you stay conscious. Oh fuck that! So fuck. like your eyes, your eyes are open. You can't move them. You can't blink. Nobody would know you're in there whatsoever. But you can fully see out of them. And then when they close your eyes, you're just in darkness for the rest of eternity. How but do you? Okay, just quick question. How do you get consent from those people? 
Because like if they're still there, I want to maybe pop open uh, Marilyn Monroe's. Uh, you know? I, th- I, I think you go, hey, if you want me, don't move. Oh, that's good. My and uncle tried that. <laughs> <laughs> and he did. Was it 10 to 15, Jared? <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if you have any other. We'll workshop it. A year for how old you are? That's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> well. But then I got really high one time and I expanded on that. And yeah. I was like, well, okay, hear me out on this. So, so you're, you're conscious, right? Okay. And your eyes are closed, obviously, because that's what happens when they, when, they, when they bury you or whatever. And then you're just in this dark universe of a space, right? You can see nothing. It's pure darkness. But because you're conscious, you can still create. So what if you create a world within your own consciousness in this darkness? Now you're God. You can create. You, you are a God of a society that you create. You're in, you create a whole other existence. So stand-up's been going well, huh? <laughs> yeah. Man. I'm fucking losing my mind. <laughs> yeah, I, I need some free time. I think, you need, I think you need some sleep. <laughs> yeah, that. More than anything. <laughs> how, how much sleep are you getting a night these days? I mean, probably like three or four hours maybe on average. Oh, well, okay. It's well, so bad. I, maybe I'm. I don't know, reading too much into it, but I think before the pop off, there might have been some things you were struggling with a little bit mentally of like finding who you were and whatever. Have any of those? Yeah, I'm gay now. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, not, I'm actually I'm saving that for when I get canceled. Don't worry. Oh no, no, it's yeah. That's that's a get out, get out of jail free card oh, right 100%. there. <laughs> Dude, if, if the moment I get canceled, to where they're like, "You're fucking done." I'm like, "Listen, I've been I've just really been." not being myself publicly. You know, I've been acting out of turn because of all this internalized pent up aggression. I just haven't been the real me. Well, we're gonna save this episode for June. So you're good to go. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we knew you were coming on, but yeah, like has the validation brought any fulfillment in there or? Um, just kind of what I mentioned earlier, just kind of a, a, a joy and excitement and validation of being like, this is the thing I'm supposed to be doing. Like if I'm getting validation from 12 million people on TikTok or whatever, like that's a, it's a huge ego boost and it makes you feel like you are on the right direction because like everybody who lives in this city, you go, what the fuck am I doing? At least a hundred times a year. You go, oh, yeah. I, sh- I should stop. I sh- yeah. It at least passes your mind for a split second a hundred times a year. So I think it just, it just that validation for sure helped me sleep at night a little bit. I was running on like one or two hours. Now we're at three or four. So we're going to get to five or six someday. I, you know, used to live in a powerhouse apartment of potential that no one knew anybody had actual real talent until you guys proved it with oh, Kevin. Yeah. Kevin. What's Kevin think now? You know, he's the big dog in the Dude, relationship. He's and, killing it right now. Yeah, I know. I mean, that boy's life changed overnight. Uh, for anybody who might not know, uh, one of my best friends for the past like eight years, uh, Kevin Miles is the new Jake from State Farm. Um, which, I, which I think is really funny. It's funny that you guys both blew up in such a separate angle yeah dude because his thing is not now i'm like with projects i'm creating and shopping and stuff like that i'm like dude i'd love to have you a part of this and he's like i, I can't do it. i have to be like you know family friendly and all that kind of stuff it's like it's i mean well the money is family friendly it's, <laughs> co- well, it's complete opposite and it's so funny because his success is so like family friendly and yeah. like he's he, he's like kind of at their bed and call for what they want them for what they want him to do and how they want him to act and everything and mine is total freedom. Yeah. Like I don't have to answer to any student. Nobody can fire me from stand-up comedy right now. Like my fans are in complete control of my career, which is, <laughs> which is- equally as terrifying, <laughs> really. Um, so it's just funny to see, yeah, exactly. It's it's so opposite how uh, how we've gotten our, our level of success recently. It's also ironic because he's not that good of a neighbor, to be honest. He owes me like 40 bucks. <laughs> Whenever he's like, like a good neighbor, I'm like, you wouldn't <laughs> fucking know, dude. I'm down uh, to help just you. straight up lying to the people. No, he's a great guy. It, it, it was amazing to watch his life change overnight. Like we both lived in a $750 a month apartment directly next door to each other. And like, we were both struggling to make that wow. um, like six months before both of us like started booking our work. It was, it's, it's incredible. Now he's got a house not, not far from here actually. Really? Yeah, man. But I mean, also a job like that is wildly demanding. Like I, with my traveling and his scheduling, like I, mean, I only get to see him a couple times a year now. Oh yeah. I'm, I feel like every time I turn on the TV, there's a different state farm commercial with oh, him. Well, I'm everywhere. Like, I'm like, sick of it. Cause like I turn it on the TV, I see him and then I go on my phone and it's you. And it's like, <laughs> I can't get away from this, everywhere. this poor friends that used to be right next to each other. And it's like, <laughs> no, now they're both rich and doing well. No, you don't want that level of success. It's disgusting. No, dude, he had to sleep with flow from progressive to even get the job. But have you seen what? the girl from AT&T? I shouldn't leave. I shouldn't. Oh, I have seen the girl from AT&T who, the one who got all upset about being so damn hot. <laughs> Could you imagine? Uh, can't the imagine what that's, what that's like to be objectified because of your looks and not because of your <laughs> talent or skill set. <laughs> oh yeah, I have been wanting to ask about that. <laughs> so uh, how many DMs a day? It, that's a high number. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's a lot, but it's, I, don't, I mean, I really don't answer them though because it's it's so many volume wise. I'm like, I, I, how am I supposed to respond to all these people? That's crazy. 
as a, I mean, I don't think you were doing terrible in the ladies department before the blow up, but now is, are you getting people that it's like, oh, they, they probably just want me because of what's going on in my life. I, I've never gotten that vibe. I also, well, I also still don't even really recognize that yeah. like I'm having the success that I am right now. Like at all. Of course, it or really you want to do this podcast. Not. You're an idiot. Yeah, <laughs> You've got yeah. so little time. You shouldn't have came here. Wait, is Theo Vaughn not coming? Ooh, Ooh. he's upstairs. He's powdering. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm sure he is. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah I've, heard, I've heard stories. Yeah, he's back on it. Unfortunately, <laughs> poor guy. I don't think, yeah, I, I've never gotten like the vibe that a girl's trying to like get with a famous comedian because he's famous or whatever. I've, I've, I haven't gotten that vibe whatsoever. Truth, truthfully, I don't have time to like hang out with any girls because I, <laughs> I'm never anywhere, dude. And after shows, I'm not getting done to like one, one a.m., two a.m. Mm-hmm. sometimes, and I'm on no sleep. I'm, I'm just drain exhausted. So I'm like, I, I have to go to sleep or I'm going to die. <laughs> Because there's a there's a rumor you kept your Plan Bs in a Pez dispenser and you'd just be like here you go, mm. and they take them and you head out. I'll crush them up a little bit yeah, yeah. from time to time and put them in pixie sticks. My mom said you even slept <laughs> with her and she didn't even she didn't even know like that's how many girls you're going through. Well, yeah, of course I didn't know it was your mom. <laughs> you did. She weirdly screams my name during sex. So <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're friends with my son. <laughs> and you're like, this is what Wait, is his mom hot? Oh, smoke show. Wait, I feel like I've seen your mom before. Okay, I don't like this because I know you like older women. Let me so. see. Do you have a picture of the back of her head? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jared, airdrop it. <laughs> How's your mom? Oh, just text her, dude. Just if you really want to know, <laughs> just text her. What, um, She's fine. No, I like that you named your specials after your grandfather. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> weird transition to that, but I thought that was, re- <laughs> I thought it was really sweet. What did he instill in you that made you want to name it after him? Uh, I mean, he was just, I mean, first and foremost, he was like my best friend and like, he really was like my dad. Like I, I don't have a dad. Um, so uh, what happened to him? Uh, well, I, I only know him as uh, test tube. <laughs> <laughs> test tube C, was it C4, 9706? C4, yeah, yeah, yeah. C3PO, yeah, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you actually oh. a test tube baby? No, 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 no. no oh, no. you just I mean, no, skip town? No, yeah. my No, my dad. <laughs> well, permanently. Oh, <laughs> he, uh, he, yeah, that's he, why you love ghosts so much. Yeah. <laughs> I'm searching for my father. Oh, oh I'm glad you figured God, it out. That and is so <laughs> fucking funny. Oh, I'm so stealing that. That's hilarious. I never <laughs> thought of it like that. It's okay, man. Every, every abandoned, like, a sane asylum. <laughs> you're like, like dad. dad. No, they, they, they bring you like, okay, we got the beeper. And then you're just in another room. Dad, please. Uh, Elton's like, what'd you say? He's like, nothing. Um, if, if you're here, make this blink. <laughs> yeah. If you're here, tell me you love me. Dad, I brought your scarf from when you went to prom with mom. <laughs> It's like, whoa, dude. <laughs> I'm like on the opposite end of the building, like by myself. And I'm like learning to ride a bike for the first time. Like he's right next to me. And he's, you're just like, don't let so go, funny. dad. Don't let go. You know what's really funny about it is my dad died when he was like 21. Like mm-hmm. my mom had me at 19. He died when I was like one and a half. I think they were, they were like the same age. So it's really funny to think about like, I'm so much older than my dad ever was. It's a weird concept oh, to think very about. Because so, when you think of a dad, you think of like someone in their 40s, 50s, yeah. like a grown person. He was never that. My mom, my mom's so funny on accident. She, <laughs> I was talking to her like last Christmas about like facial hair. I was like, fuck, like it's still not like, I still don't have a beard. It's so annoying. She was like, well, your dad never had one. So you might not get one. I was like, like he's, he was <laughs> fucking 21. <laughs> he's a child. Really get a chance. His yeah. balls barely just dropped yeah. when he had me. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a funny concept to me. Um, but yeah, no, no dad. So my, my grandpa was kind of that figure. And um, growing up, I would spend every weekend with my grandpa and what all we would do is just watch movies. Like that was kind of our thing. It's like every time he would come pick me up on Friday after school, he would have like five to eight new DVDs. And they were usually comedies like Adam Sandler, uh, David Spade, Jim Carrey, all, all, you know, all the classics. And so I grew up watching that stuff and he was hilarious. Like he, did you ever see the movie Dirty Grandpa? Yeah. With Robert De Niro. Like he was was literally that person. Like he had like (laughs) the most, the, the grossest sense of humor ever. It was fucking hilarious. So like he was just kind of the and and he thought I was the funniest person in the entire world. So I think like at a young age, like that's what gave me the confidence to make other people laugh. Cause I was like, well, this person thinks I'm fucking the funniest person <laughs> in the world. If you were arrested with no explanation, what would your friends or family assume you did? Ooh, you know anything weird? I love public stuff. It's kind of like where have you done in public? Uh, <laughs> and don't you hit me with that. where haven't I? If you want to see some extra content with Matt, uh, a question we're now allowed to put on the public internet. Make sure you go to our Patreon right now or I'll fight your mom. You know the deal. I'll punch her and physically harm you and your family if you don't. Is that how you? It works. Okay. In the description, Patreon. Dude, come on.
Let's go back to the show. In this day and age, you know what you need to do absolutely anything on this digital earth? Have a website. Oh, let me guess, you don't have one. Well, guess what you should do? Get one. And what's the easiest place to use? To have a website, Jared? Squarespace. Tell them about, what are some tools you can use on Squarespace, Jared? Squarespace is the all-in-one platform where you can build your brand and grow your business online. Oh, but creating websites are hard. I, I don't even know how to code. You don't need to know how to code to create something beautiful on Squarespace, okay? You wanna look professional in your life? Do you ever wanna feel like you're a part of something bigger than yourself? You know what you need? A website that looks good and is not hard to make. And you know how you do that? Squarespace.com. They have dozens of templates that you can just plug in all of your information, pictures, media, anything you need to build your brand without needing to code. You can do absolutely anything with Squarespace. Say you're in school and you're trying to raise money for something, a big charity, who knows? How about this? You can collect donations straight on the website. Pretty insane, huh? Or you might have a blog like Jared's ex. Um, okay. All right. And and you can use Squarespace to talk about your feelings and how terrible your ex-boyfriend is. Huh, Jared? I'll give her credit. The blog looked great. It did look great. We'll give her credit. Very well done. <laughs> Very well done. Or maybe you're looking to get your business off the ground. Squarespace has you covered with their e-commerce tools. They have simple checkout processes and secure payments so you don't have to worry about anything when you're selling your products. Go get a website today and where should you do it? Squarespace.com slash dropouts. When you're ready to check out, get your good website or domain, you can get 10% off with the code dropouts. That's squarespace.com slash dropouts. Let's get back to the show, baby boys. Thank you, Squarespace. What, what's your like, number one comfort movie when it comes to him? Oh, for my grandpa, I would say the Ernest movies. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you ever seen those? I don't Jim think Barney? so. Really? No, I'll have to watch it. I mean, it. here's the thing. They do not hold up. Of course. <laughs> like, they're not good movies. But I mean, if you watch them at all when you were a kid, like, you understand the nostalgia. It's just very goofy. Yeah. Um, probably that or... This is how bad of a father figure he was. Uh, like Bad Santa. Yeah. Bob no, Ford. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, one yeah. of my earliest like Christmas movie memories. Okay, I see, what, I see where things went wrong. Yeah, yeah, it's been a long time coming. Um, so yeah, he, and he was also the first person, like he would take me to open mics when I was 15. Oh, hell yeah. To like, to go to comedy shows. And a lot of those shows, excuse me, um, and I mentioned it at the end of the special as well, when I'm talking about him more, like those are bringer open mics a lot in Ohio. So like you have to- Show me your shirt, Jaren. The, 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 what's that? Show me your shirt. Oh, I just bought this shirt. It says what, uh, highway to hell and it says welcome to Ohio. Oh my God. <laughs> He's an Ohioan. I am. Wait, what part? Cincinnati. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's like one of the better parts. Uh, yeah. That's, Fuck, you, I don't, you're scarred. <laughs> <laughs> Permanently. That's like um, pure meth at least. Oh yeah. Skyline Chili? Oh, of course, Skyline. Oh, okay. Fuck yes, yeah, not, man, my it's dude. Never you think like your asshole is gross now? <laughs> oh, dude, you oh, yeah. you eat something. I have that. a bidet. So do you really have a bidet? Do you not? You've changed. Do you not have a bidet? <laughs> no, I don't you have a changed. bidet. Dude. Um, it's self-installed from Amazon. Do I feel like I had like a, a porcelain bidet? I thought you had like the toilet bowl next to the toilet bowl. Of course you know not. One? I'd love one. Can I, <laughs> I would love. Can I, no, no, no. Let's let's stay on this topic for a second. Okay. Um, if you were to get feces on your hand, mm -hmm. and I gave you napkins. Okay. And you're just taking it off until you can't see it anymore. You'd want to wash your hands, right? Yeah. Now, now imagine that is being squished through the darkest hole in your body and it's just <laughs> being warmed up all day as you're walking. You want to clean it out with, know, with a little high, uh, H2O. This is exactly the reason why I've never let a girl lick my bottle. Have they asked? Exact. All the time, dude. Or like, what? A, or like a finger or something like how do that. They, how like, do they, I don't want it. How do they bring it up? Um, they go, I'm, I'm hungry. I'm like, oh, yeah, hungry? Yeah. what do you, what do you like want? I just had corn, so pretty much it hasn't broken down yet. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you want? Whatever you had yesterday. That's what I would, I would love. Okay. Well, um, it's regret. Dude, I'm, Cause I'm just like, dude, no matter how clean my butthole is, it's not that clean. I got no. you. It could be, it could look sparkly and pristine and everything, but you know, it's not, you know what you did a couple hours ago. It's <laughs> unforgivable. Alyssa, do you want to get in there and maybe give us a one, two of what it's all about in there? Uh, I'm, I'm okay. You're okay? Yeah. You've never had a girl be like, I want to put like a finger, a finger. I, I, I've had them ask. You never let them? I, I don't want, like, I don't want, no, I told them no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, sorry. I just did it. I didn't turn me on. Jared? I've had girls ask, but. Dude, they're so about it. I, I feel like it's a power move and I'm not, I'm not going for it. Their no. argument is always the same thing too. It's going to make you come so much harder. Hey, 
coming already feels amazing. It I feels don't need great. to shoot a load through the fucking drywall. <laughs> like how, how much? How much harder do I have to come? They're like that's where your G spot is. Trust me. I'm, I'm like okay. I don't believe you. I don't. How did you find this out? Yeah, my G spot is like just do do like the scalp massage thing. Yeah, like, yeah. That, or just like tell me you love me and let me cry about yeah. my mom's two divorces. Put on Ernest, arms. dude. Yeah. Put on <laughs> Ernest saves Christmas. Let's look at my grandpa's old pictures of us fishing when I was a kid. <laughs> if you really want to make me happy, <laughs> let me tell you about my past. G spots for grandpa. Everybody knows that. Yeah. Unlike you, I don't have to do quantum physics to come. You know. Yeah. I don't need you to. Fucking, <laughs> my G spot's to... racist. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> you know what's really funny? It's so funny you say that. Growing up, my grandpa was so racist. Like, oh, the one oh, that you love more yeah, than anything? Absolutely. <laughs> is that where but you guys bonded? But what's an amazing story is when I was growing up, my entire life, all of my friends have been black, right? Yeah. So he was forced to be around black people my entire childhood. <laughs> and if it, my beginning years of stand up was a lot of black shows. So he was coming with me to that. So, like, I was slowly integrating him into the black community. <laughs> Exposure therapy. And then, and then over the past like eight years at his at his new house, he lived next next door to this uh, to this black family, and they were his best friends. Like he loved them. They exchanged like they would oh. bring food over to each other's houses. They would mow each other's lawns. Like the best. And I, I assume like, their beautiful. I assume their food was better than what he brought over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was. I brought you some saltines. <laughs> it was. It was just. It was. I adorable. took the salt off because I thought it was a little spicy. <laughs> <laughs> No, but no, that's that's good that he had a full circle moment. Yeah, man. Good I, for him. He, he he worked his way through racism. It's fantastic. Oh, so so my mom fell in love with a man on eHarmony when mm -hmm. I was 10 years old. We were living in Georgia. We moved, oh, sorry, we were living in Vegas. We moved to South Georgia. I get there, town of a thousand. There's a KKK rally in the town, white hoods and everything. And I'm looking at my mom like, where are we? And she's just like, duck your head and look down. And um, I just thought it was wild. Cause it like when I was little, I, I was in Vegas, so... I was kind of not really a minority, but white people were, there's definitely more Hispanic and, and black people in my school than white. In Vegas? Yeah. Interesting. Well, def well Vegas is like highly Hispanic. Really? So, so like I, you know, I got a little taste for that top of Tio and then I go there, it's 99% white. I couldn't find a flavor I really wanted. But, um, <laughs> but when, yeah, when I got out there, I didn't even know what racism was. And then we got, you know, the cloak boys out there. What's the cloak boys? Like just the white hoods and like, and they had a uh, Confederate flag rally. So about, I've shown you that video. How many trucks would you say were there? Oh, hundreds at like least. 300, 400 yeah. trucks with just giant um, uh, Confederate flags just going down the street to show that they're, they're Southern pride. Which, you would have thought they were Vegas? going to war. No, in Georgia. This was in Georgia. Oh, oh okay. yeah, 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 like, yeah. Southern pride in Vegas. <laughs> so, I was like, you've never been in the strip? <laughs> yeah, it's that strip. Yeah, it's, I'd like that. yeah. <laughs> no worries. Jared, uh, Jared's the head of one of the chapters. He can. Like, if the gays can have a whole parade, <laughs> why can't the severely straights? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> severely We straight. should have a float off, like straights versus gays. Oh, that would be good. That'd what, be kind of fun. What float would, could we make? We really want to represent the straights here. That's tough. Obviously, all white. Obviously, just kind of we're all just like mansplaining at the same time. We've all just got I a think mic. That, yeah, just, we're all explaining mansplaining what the float is yeah. all at once. So this, uh, <laughs> so this, um, Aaron Rodgers went to the Jets and basically, <laughs> yeah. But did he really? Did you not know that? I did not know that. Yeah. Oh, you didn't know that. He just got traded to the Jets. This is the most impactful moment of the entire podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm shook right now. For real? Mm -hmm. Who's gonna be quarterback for Green Bay? I have no idea. I, I mean, they traded did they somebody, draft someone? but they might have drafted somebody. I, uh, I honestly don't know. Interesting. We're off topic. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. Back to racist floats. Yeah, 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 yeah. Racist floats. <laughs> no, no. I think we're on topic. That sounds like a your publicist like a dessert is like, menu. No, go back to yeah, Aaron please, Rodgers. Please talk about football. For the love of God. <laughs> um, there you go. You need a male audience, okay? Talk about football and cars. And <laughs> I know. Uh, I really do need more of a male audience. That was one funny thing. Like we went to your stand up last night, and you were t you told a joke, and you were just like. Fuck, I wish I had more dudes in here. That would have killed. Oh, when I was talking about shower gist? Yeah. Yeah, man. Cause it's such a funny concept to me because I've I realized through talking I was to dying. other friends that every other dude also washes shower yeah. gist up the drain like that. And I was like, oh, that's like a relatable thing. And I it did it at shows and no women understand what I'm talking about at all. Uh uh. Well, it's it's funny how just removed we are from jerking off. Yeah. Like we're we're just we're in there and we don't we I don't even think we want to. 
I no, I'll, do, I'll do it out of boredom all the time. Just the yeah. demons want to, and then and then we're like, oh, no, I'm gonna clean. And it's just, it's not even shame anymore. It's no. just, I don't even remember I'm here. <laughs> yeah, you know, you go on thing, autopilot. It's like drinking water. Like you just do it. You know? Yeah, I know. I, I definitely know what you do. Mean. This so I don't jerk off. Oh, <laughs> do this so I don't jerk. Has your jerking off gone down since you've been on the road so much? No, it has not. It's gone up. Yeah, up, yeah. Yeah, I'm stressed, dude. <laughs> what are your biggest stresses now that? You know that I don't have more time to jerk off. Yeah, <laughs> that's my biggest stress, dude. Just sleep. If I'm being completely honest, yeah. Like the tour I'm on is a dream come true. I'm having so much fun. The shows are fantastic. If I could just sleep like a normal person, I'd be golden. But okay. I have like horrific insomnia. It's so annoying. Do what you do you drive or do you fly to most of your tour dates? Um, we fly. You fly, uh, but we are. Uh, I'm hoping to get a tour bus at the end of this year, which would okay. be fucking. Awesome. That'll be nice. You're, are you are you able to sleep on planes and cars and stuff like that? Not even a little bit. Oh, which, okay. Which that's why, your problem. Oh yeah, and that's yeah. that's why I got a place in Austin um, at the beginning oh. of this year because I because I couldn't go back. It's very cheap. Do not worry. <laughs> As we're in your mansion right now, we're not in a mansion, man. We're in a, a nice Southern California home. <laughs> you, you don't I mean, have to lie to the people. Diner. I'm we're, sorry. We're going to be doing a house tour for our Patreon. So yeah, like, oh, know. hold on. Subscribe to the Patreon. God, Jerry, we forget every. <laughs> subscribe it. to the Patreon. Sub I thought you were going to say subscribe to the patriarchy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll talk about that on the oh, Patreon. Oh, we could put that on the float. <laughs> oh, oh, perfect. <laughs> Wait, is patriarchy women or matriarchy women? Matriarchy is women. It is? So yeah. matriarchy is male. Yeah. Subscribe to the Patreon. <laughs> um, if you really want to hear something crazy about Matt, this Patreon, like I can't say it on the internet, obviously. It's some crazy stuff in there. <laughs> hey, act like it, it actually is, it, right, it man? It is. It's... it's um. Yeah, I'm just describing them in great detail, and Jared's going to draw them. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, going to get a whiteboard. Is this the guy that touched you? <laughs> Why point to the page? It's just a police lineup of different dicks drawn. <laughs> how funny memory. How funny would that be if it was like, um, like it's a sketch about like who touched who and it's just all black guys and you and it's like who, and they're like yeah it's it's Matt. It's Matt. <laughs> they're like are you sure? Are you sure? We brought in everybody that kind of looks like. No, yeah, it's no. It was him for sure. Yeah. How has that never been a thing? Like you know, there's like police sketch artists. Like yeah. can you describe the man who 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 attacked you? Or whatever. How has that never been a thing for like flashers? Like can you describe the dick and the guy's like, oh yeah, I've seen this one. I think oh, there was yeah. an office episode of it. Where, <laughs> really? Yeah, like Rain Wilson's like draw it, draw it. <laughs> I think it was pretty funny. It's good to know that we are equally funny enough to have wrote for the office. Yeah, yeah. we should have. We should have. You know, we weren't alive. Our, we were too young. You weren't alive. Let's, um, do the, let's do the cubicle. Have you seen like Reno 911 popping off? One of my favorite shows. No, oh, that's what I'm saying. I think we need to get together, create a show like that. Just We did. It was called yeah, Bird Patrol. I was going to say, we <laughs> talked about this no, in the beginning. But, but, but do it again because we didn't have enough time to film that. No, we really did. It was we, rushed. We, it was in the pandemic. We, we no filmed budget. it three days with, yeah. with six bucks and a high five between yeah, all of us. Yeah. But, and then put those clips and then it will pop off. And then finally the studio heads are going to be like, you know what? The kids seem to like it. We might as well put some funding behind it. And you know what the best part about, my favorite thing about that entire project is they let us do our comedy. Mm -hmm. And that was the stuff that yeah. hit the hardest. Like everyone yeah. resonates. When people quote a joke from one of us or whatever, yeah. I'm like, it was something we improv'd. It's, it's so, so nice when somebody just goes, I trust you. Go be funny. Exactly. And if we would have had more time. Oh of my just, God, dude. I mean, because we could have riffed. What, what, what was that one riff we were doing? Oh, the uh, just outwoking each other, basically, yeah. <laughs> of, who, of who loves black people more. We and riffed for like 10, I'm, I'm promising you don't. <laughs> okay. My brother's black, so. Really? Yeah. You Jared's have? met him. Yeah. Wait, are you being for real? Yeah. Uh -huh. Your brother's black? Yeah. Is he adopted? Well, I would consider that buying someone, yes. which I would never do. So he's part of the family. Mm, <laughs> sounds stolen then. <laughs> How old is he? You ever seen How The Blind Side? Based on him. I know it is It is a very similar story. Um, his name's Lele, Galatian King. Lele? We call, yeah, Lele. <laughs> his real name's Galatian King. Uh, he came to live with us, 6'5", uh, huge dude, ran uh, like a 4'7", 40, um, but, just, but played like offensive, defensive. Well, I think it was defensive line. What's it called when you're the sacker? Uh, the sacker? You can either be a linebacker. No, what's the outside? Defensive tackle. Defensive, defensive tackle. end is on the outside. That's what it's Well, he said defensive end. tackle, so you guys- That was what it was called <laughs> when I was in You guys are making football. the straight pride float look terrible right now. <laughs> well, sorry, man. I, I'm more of a basketball guy. You know that. And by knowing that, we've never talked about it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he, he lives with us, and uh, we got him on the right path, and then he went D1, and turns out his mom- um, is Sandra Bullock? <laughs> uh, well, my mom would be playing Sandra Bullock. Well, no, funny enough. And then is this a real story? I swear on my life. It is a real story. And then funny enough, we became friends with the 
guy that plays SJ um, in the blind side, you know, the little kid, yeah. which was kind of like my role in the whole situation. I was like, I kind of lived your life just so you know. <laughs> and anyway, um, it's not about so me. There was a, so you, I'm just. You legitimately have a black adopted brother. Yeah. Say the N word right now. <laughs> you won't. If you have a black family member, go right ahead. He gave me the N word pass when I was little. I traded a Lunchable for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, who'd you give it to? Well, no, I thought it would go up in value. So I've still got it, but man, has it depreciated. <laughs> yeah, I, I really thought like I could, I was like, oh, this is going to be like, you know, like an old baseball card. I could sell it for, you know, a million dollars. You and get it graded. Oh, wow. oh yeah, yeah, near a, mint to mint. PSA like, 10, it looks like on this wow. one. Yeah, I kept it in a sleeve. <laughs> yeah, is it a Hitler rookie card? <laughs> That's amazing. You know, it's funny when I was in uh, when I was in Alabama, and actually, I think it's the TikTok I'm posting later today, actually, so it'll probably be up when this comes out. This dude in the audience in Alabama had a, a legitimate plastic uh, white privilege card. Where'd you get those? What? I'll tell you off camera. <laughs> <laughs> he, said he, got it. he said he bought it from a black dude. We now live in a world where black dudes are selling white privilege to white guys. This is the best year yet. Do we just have like race baseball cards now? We really should. Did you pick up the Puerto Rican? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This one's great. The, the Dominicans are just rated like 99 overall. <laughs> and, and we just, we're just like fighting with them. It's like, and I put down one white scientist. <laughs> it's like it's Yu-Gi-Oh. It's like I got 10, I got 10 black guys who beat the hell out of them. I see your three black guys and I raise you one blue-eyed white devil. <laughs> <laughs> I, I raise you one blonde-eyed, blue-haired, blonde, blonde hair, blue-eyed Hitler lover. Damn, that's a power move. That is a power move. We, do, we really didn't need to make this. Race yeah. cards. That's a that's a Shark Tank idea. Did you pull the race card and Did then we you? like the race card? Oh shit! Oh, it's like one of those um, you know those videos where they they do like the the the, the un unveiling unpackaging. Mm -hmm. What's it called? Unboxing. Unboxing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we just did one of those. I'm like, oh wow, Muhammad Ali, Michael Jackson well, when, <laughs> when he was black. Like, you got the black? Wow, I got the yeah. white one. Oh, it's holographic. Like, it <laughs> moves oh. when you move it. I got the one where you can't tell which one it is. <laughs> yeah, he goes from black to white whenever you, however you move the card. And he's doing this too. <laughs> Oh my God. That's, that's actually, funny. that's such a good idea. Fuck. That would be, that's like, even if it's a, that would be a really funny just parody video of just like the people that do like the Pokemon opening or uh -huh. whatever, how they take the top three cards, they put it on the bottom because those are like the best ones and then they go through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they're like, oh, we got a um, Pelosi. <laughs> Limited edition Epstein. That's oh, nice. wow. wow. It comes like with three smaller cards. <laughs> Oh no! There's cum. It comes, it comes no, with bubble gum. There's cum on the three smaller cards. <laughs> <laughs> they're, stu they're, they're stuck to cancer. Um, no, but funny, funny enough. So like the n-word pass thing was real. He's like, for your lunchable, you could say the n-word, and I was just like, well, I'm not gonna say it, but you're a lot bigger than me, so here's the lunchable. <laughs> and I told that as like a stand-up bit, like I'm trying to do like open mics, and they t they yelled at me to get off the stage. <laughs> They're like, you're racist. I'm like, well, for, my brother's black. And like, it was just like a, well, cause I, I said something like, I, I think the N word pass should be like um, a coffee shop card. Like after 10, you can say it. I don't think you can say 10 just, what? Like, like what 10 N word pass, 10 word, 10 N word pass. So I was like, I think black people should walk around and have like stamps. So it's like, I can, if I do something nice. I hate to tell you, Gary Owen has a joke about Does this. Does he? Yeah, but I have like a punch card. Oh, that's exactly what mine was. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know who Gary yeah. Owen is. So that's how you know really? I steal it. Oh, he's a Cincinnati comic actually. Is um, he really? Cincinnati, he's a very good comic, yeah. But man, they were mad. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's one of the few comics who can get away with doing that. Oh, right, okay. he's, he's a white dude and he only performs for black audiences. It's easy. Oh, very I comic. know who you're talking about he's now. He's fucking hilarious. He's hysterical. Very, very I, I the problem was the there, there wasn't many black people in the audience. Yeah, man. Know the room. Read the room. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And listen, that comes with experience, you know. I'm sure you've experienced some stuff like that when you were first starting out, especially as a little I've kid. I've always gotten along oh, absolutely. better with black people. Like a oh, 1000%. Dude, white people legitimately suck. Most of the time, dude. <laughs> or if you like if you if you play uh pickup basketball, I play a lot of pickup basketball. The most heinous things are said to each other, but in like no, I feel like there's the best bond. I, oh yeah, I have been white boy for twelve years, and oh, that, you're always white boy, always. <laughs> and, and I love it a little bit. I love it. Hit him with a nice pass. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Give some assist, feed some assists. <laughs> They'll go look at Stockton. <laughs> and I, I feel so good. I'm like, whenever you pull up for a three, you go Danny Ainge, and then I go <laughs> Kobe, and I'll go thanks LeBron, and they're like, no, 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 you, no. Can't, you, you can't say it. like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> we can't be them. You have to be one. Okay, sorry. <laughs> and then you give them your Gatorade. <laughs> I'm sorry. There you go. You, it's, yeah, it's, 
the cool blue. One of the better flavors. Yeah, dude, you got to start performing in black rooms better. Black, uh, black people <laughs> are the best comedy audiences in the entire world. Nobody has a better sense of humor than black people. Nobody does. I it's believe fucking it. amazing. Well, yeah, I mean, growing up with people of African-American descent. Um, <laughs> that's, that's how PC they, they want. Like, that's what your publicist is like. Can you go in with the, um, can, can we give the 23 and me when I was growing up with a 23% Cambodian, 14% Nigerian, <laughs> yeah, 3% Irish. Oh, I'm scared household. to take 23 and me. Cause Why? if I'm not any percent black, I'm going to be so disappointed. I got news for you. Hey, it stop. might be negative. <laughs> negative <laughs> percent. Yeah. You know what that means? That means your ancestors. Yeah. 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 The like most you, awkward thing is you, you meet like a black friend with the same last name as you. Have you? I haven't. So that's how I know like my pat, like my ancestors didn't do anything shady. <laughs> you ever been with like a Johnson that meets a Johnson? It's like, Oh, Johnson's are everywhere. Uh, I guess that's true. You ever met a Rife? Some white ones. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that is very good. Well, I think I think I'm mostly German and Italian. Oh, that's good. There are yeah, two people who have never yeah, German. Done, never, they've never yeah, done anything. Yeah, wrong. that's good. Yeah, good, yeah, good, yeah, good, yeah, good, yeah. Good. yeah. Not a single thing comes to mind. Not a single thing. That's, Ohio, no. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, wait, what about um, World War? No, that was dude, that was forever. Ago. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was pre-slavery, dude. That was that was so long ago, right? It might have been. Po- I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm not a historian. You're a huge history buff, aren't you? Yeah, I love history, dude. It's, <laughs> which is, that's a problematic thing to say now. Like, you, oh, you enjoy learning about all the bad things that were happening? Yeah, a little bit. It's cool, it's cool to know it happened. Yeah. You, you, can, you learn it and then you go, hey, not so good. Well, it's, it's kind of fascinating to see how fucked up history was, you know, because I feel like, well, to an extent, we're in a somewhat civilized age of humanity, but they were just behemoths back then. I, I, you know, the only thing I respect about history is they were blunt about what pieces of shit they were. That's like, true. They, nobody hid that they were a piece of shit before like 30 years ago. <laughs> now everyone's the fakest motherfucker. In the entire <laughs> Anything controversial that comes out, that's like a stance on a certain subject. Everyone goes, I'm, I'm, I'm pro that I support that. And then they go home and go, oh, man, you know who there's too many of <laughs> 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 no, everyone's a fucking liar, dude. It's so <laughs> sad. So there, is, there is something to be said for blunt disrespect. Okay. That's yeah. fair. That's yeah. fair. I mean, the world, I mean, the world is more is just as fucked up now, just in different ways. It That's, really yeah. is. Obviously, no one's comparing social media bullying to slavery. <laughs> Obviously, no one's comparing this. But I mean, it's for the rest of time. We're never going to live in a perfect world. Oh, people no. are always going to be shitty to other people. It sucks, unfortunately, but that's, that's why humanity. It, it is. That's why you just try to not be a piece of shit yourself, Jared, and then just uh, yeah, try to be happy. Try to be a nice person. That's all you can do. That's all you can the do. The more you know. With a lot of leaking gals. Wanting to gallivant. Leaking gals? Jared, I'm trying to be respectful. Um, Nailing it. Trying to be near, well, that's what I'm getting to. If there's any, like, some that you can, you know, throw Jared's way, he's been, what, what would you say, a little bit of a dry spell? Just a little bit. <laughs> but he's well, got a great yeah. personality. I don't know why you're throwing me under the bus, but no, sure. First of all, I'm trying to help you. We're trying to throw you under the train, dog. Mm, I like that choo-choo, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. That, that sounded like him trying to do an impression of your stepbrother. That's, that's what it's. I thought Lele was here. <laughs> like, Lele would beat the hell out of you. He'd beat the hell out of me sometimes. He's six five. Yeah, he's six five. He's like what two sixty, two seventy. Like just it's pure, pure muscle. Damn. And you know, sometimes I was I would steal his pillows, and so he would put me inside the pillowcase, <laughs> and then beat me with a drum kit. You know, where is he uh, now? Well, he's still in South Georgia. He, he should have made, he should, okay. So he went to, he went to college. Um, his mom was going through some troubles. And so he came back to take care of her and never realized the full dream of, you know, playing professional sports, but huh. his best friend used to come over as well. Um, actually went to the NFL, Jimmy Staten. How are you? Wait, how old is Lele now? He's in his thirties. So it's, it's a little past the, how old are you? I'm 27. 27. Okay. Same age. Yeah. Your birthday is two days after mine. That's if I remember right. Correctly, just yeah. because you had it on the set and mine was two days before and we bonded over that, so which romantic. I thought, but you didn't remember. <laughs> I, <laughs> thought I remember it. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Is it the sixth? 10th. Oh, then I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> the oh, the, okay. It's just the fourth. Yeah. It doesn't, uh, same day as Beyonce. Not a big deal. Well, mine's the day before 9-11. So not a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. What's your stance on 9-11? <sighs> seen better days you know that's all we need yeah clip that <laughs> <laughs> send that to your publicist we just like grill what, what is 
is it about? Do what is it about like um, tragedies that happen to America that we just like? Don't forget. Nine <laughs> eleven, uh, the Alamo. What do we want to forget? You would think. It's like when you when you go over to London and you reference like the American Revolution, they're like. Ah. I was actually just there like last week and I was at the museum. You at just kept museum. bringing it up. <laughs> we were at this, one and oh! We were at this museum and they had all this like all these like weapons and stuff there. It was pretty yeah. cool. And one of them was like a Revolutionary War era uh, musket or something like that. And he was like, yes, and then this one was used a lot during the American Revolution. And I go, hey, uh, who, who won that again? <laughs> Dude, I brought it up like four times. He would not answer. Like, I love it. I was definitely upset about it. Yeah, my I like grandpa's very similar salty. about a war we had here in our country. Which one? We had in our country. Oh. Uh, <laughs> the Civic one? Yeah. <laughs> the Civic. Yeah, the, the Honda Civic. The Honda Civic. Honda Civic. <laughs> Honda Civic war. Yeah. Hyundai's one, was it? The Hyundai's did win. Yeah. Um, Jared, hit him with the question. <laughs> Here we go. Ooh. Here we go. You had a big uh, bit about red flags mm -hmm. in your special. So uh, what are your biggest icks? They can be just general kind of icks doesn't necessarily have to be geared towards relationships. People who don't believe in ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, that's strike one. Strike one. Well, you never convinced me. I asked you to, and you didn't even you didn't pull out any receipts. You, I, I mentioned one thing, and you go, maybe that's it, actually. It's so you're easily swayed. <laughs> yeah, that, you're it's such still a politician. Up in the air. It's still up in the air. You're such a politician. Ah, uh, Dude, you just you got to go to a place and experience something. That's the only way you can believe it. All right, take that. me with you. Okay, Where are you good. going? Uh, I got a nice little place up in wine country. I think we could go check it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, spooky romantic. Turn the inside out like a war victim, baby. <laughs> what? You love history. I sure do. Yeah. But I'm excited about our future. <laughs> I think we'd get along pretty well if one of us, you know, makes the snip. We'll flip a coin. The snip. Oh, I'm also saving that for being canceled, <laughs> which might be very soon after this podcast. <laughs> wait, wait, did we talk about anything? We didn't. Did we cover race and racism? And I said slavery like nine times. I, I could tell the like after the third time, you're like, no one is saying slavery's good. Just, just, just saying, you know, uh, making sure everybody knows my stance on it. <laughs> yeah, thanks for clearing it up. Biggest icks: slavery. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, not a fan. Misogyny. Misogyny. Well, we did say subscribe to the patriarchy, so yeah. that kind of that's probably in that's probably in the teaser. I thought that was an accident. Yeah. I thought it was a, a flub of words. Yeah, it was. Um, what, what, what do they call that? The foot in the mouth. What's that called? The um, a Freudian slip. My uncle having a weird Tuesday. <laughs> what? He's in defeat. <laughs> Who? <laughs> My uncle. Your uncle's in defeat. Yeah. Are you? You in anything weird? No. I'm Good. Kind of boring, probably. Good. Just go ship. You just like, is that why you like Mormons so much? Because you give them their letter for missionary work? Yeah, I serve yeah. them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, I serve Mormons. Yeah. 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 Here you go. You're summoned to hell. <laughs> They'll be expecting you. Okay, X. Uh, I'm a big lifestyle guy. So like if a girl is um, constantly out at clubs, I'm oh. again, not a big club guy at all. I'll go out That's occasionally a with like my tight knit group of friends yeah. that I'm like, we're going to have a good time no matter what. Like I'm very big. If, I, if I'm going to go to a club, I'll get a table and invite no women. So I'm like, this is just me and my boys hanging out. Like we're having a good time. Like I can't oh, yeah. stand a promoter table at a club. Promoters are the fucking grossest people on the <laughs> face of the planet. Nobody likes you. People are pretending to be your friends so they can get a table, get a, get a spot at your table. Bro, I don't know anything about club culture. Okay. I don't, I don't frequent it often. It's awful. I understand it's fun. Um, there's girls twerking. I hear. Not not in LA. That's the thing about LA clubs. Oh. Nobody has any fun. Everyone mm -hmm. goes to stand around or like be on their phone. It's the most. It's the saddest thing you've ever seen. Yeah. It's off. And the tables are so cram packed. You can't move. Nobody's dancing or anything fun. So that's why I'm like, if I do go out, it's just with my friends. I'm, like, I'm not focused on anybody else. Okay. What are What do you actually like to do? Masturbate. <laughs> uh, but, um, <laughs> like one of my hobbies. Yeah. I mean, I'm just trying to get to know you. It's so basic. Like, I'll go to the gym. Go to the movies. That's pretty much it. That's all my free time that I have. You still want to box somebody? Absolutely. Who, who you want to call somebody out? Anybody out there? You probably make some money in a Harry boxing match. Harry Styles. Match. Oh, oh, I pay for that. That would loser be gets iconic. kissed on the mouth. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Oh man, I'd love to be a loser. Yeah, I know. I was gonna say. That's oh a, no, my the, guard's down. The fastest fight in boxing history. <laughs> I, just, I just, I get knocked out ass first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I think you're the first person to bring like that 
Harry Styles type fan base to comedy, which is strange. It's not ideal. <laughs> it's really not. Comedy is supposed to be for people yeah. who have like fucked up senses of humor who are like, I'm here, I'm I'm drunk, I'm gritty, I've had a time, I'm ready to laugh at some fucked up shit. No, I, I went to one of your shows um, a while ago and like all the LA girls that, you know, think there's something were there. And <laughs> anytime you, you said an offensive joke, they were just like, oh, dude, can I tell you my favorite thing at comedy shows is like my audiences are like, 80% women, 20% guys. And yeah. I'd say 15 of that 20% are boyfriends who are drugged to the show and don't want to be there. Yeah. Right? <laughs> my favorite thing is like, because I don't pander. If you come to my live show, I'm not doing the fucking one-handed belt thing. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not pandering into a female audience. I'm not, I'm doing the stand-up that's mine, right? Yeah. So in the beginning of the show, it's always this. The boyfriend's always like this <laughs> and the girlfriend's always like this. <laughs> Just and then so about, by 30 minutes in, the girlfriend is like this <laughs> and the boyfriend is like this. <laughs> I'm like, good, good. My comedy's working. Thank God. I'm finding the right people. Oh, that's hilarious. It's so weird. I just, I refuse. And I know I could, I could play it up. I could play into the whole fuck boy, come to the show and just look at me and I just say some flirtatious, provocative things all show. And it could be an uproarious energy. Mm -hmm. I'm sure people would have a lot of fun, but I'm like, dude, I would want to fucking kill myself. Do other night. comics have opinions about that? Being so different of like oh yeah dude people comics who don't know me for sure think i'm like a social media comic not yeah. knowing that i've been doing stand-up for 12 years yeah in regular comedy clubs in front of people instead of in front of adults who don't know me or don't give a fuck who i am yeah so it's like it's it's weird that i have it's it's weird to me i have the fan base that i have but you know i'm not mad at it obviously i'm yeah. incredibly grateful and out of those fans it's like yeah i might i might lose some over time for people who aren't fans for the right reasons but i'm gonna find the right ones do you ever find yourself like in the green room trying to like prove yourself? It's like, oh, I'm like, what you, I'm not that guy that you think I am. Or like, do you over, or do you go defensive, offensive? Neither really. I'm yeah. like, dude, just hang out with me. You'll see yeah. I'm probably not the person you think I am. Well, you're exactly what I thought you were. That's so, hot. Um, well, hey man, thanks for coming on. Of course, man. Um, I, was, I, was I was so tired of being successful that I, I figured it was time to end my career. Yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 it's easy. I'm so canceled. Great. <laughs> um, you can find him on the road. And yep. other places, mattreifcomedy.com. Yep, mattreifofficial.com. Mattreifofficial.com. Every, look, everything is sold out right now on my website, but we're announcing a massive tour uh, at the beginning of June. So if this is out by then or after then, go check it out. Hell yeah. yeah. And um, if you stay to the end, DM me a picture of Matt when he was 15 doing stand-up. Thank you. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, goodbye. Thanks, man. This was fun. Yeah.